Welcome to Saving the Past. I am GD. I'm glad you could all join me today. Well, today is April 8th, 2020, and it is currently 4.59 a.m. Rocky Mountain Time. Well, we'll briefly go over the uh, gold and silver charts here, and then I want to have a little conversation with you about something and um, give you a website that I think might be interesting for you folks to take a look at. But let's just go over the gold and silver spot prices right now, and um, then we'll move on to something else. Uh, currently, we are at, the, we're on the gold chart right now. We're currently at 648.31. Uh, it's bouncing around a little bit. It opened up at 645.99. We hit a high of 657 and a low of 640.80. Well, <clears throat> this is looking very good right now. We are hanging um, close into that resistance level of 1650. Yesterday we had a close, or actually we had a high of 1678.60. So this right now, and I believe we hit that pretty close to it on March 11th, we hit a high of 1671.40. So this is going to be the current resistance level. <clears throat> Uh, but this chart's looking very good. It's stair-stepping its way up, but I want to offer some caution here. Uh, until we get through this virus situation and start taking another look at economic news that's going on, <clears throat> we're going to have a choppy market over the rest of this year. So you want to be very careful um, and pick your entry points really carefully. Um, <clears throat> if the, uh, if the uh, premiums were coming down, I would still be a buyer in this area if we were back to normal premiums, but I would not be paying, as I've mentioned many a times before, I would not be paying the high premiums that are going on right now. So you need to factor that in, but let's take a look at the silver chart here real quick. And um, we are currently at 1506. We opened at 1497, hit a high of 1513 and a low of 1484. And just like with the gold, we have resistance right above us. Uh, 1555 we hit for a high yesterday, and I believe we were pretty close to that. Uh, let's just see here. We hit a high on March 13th of 1586 and a high of 1523 on March 16th. So uh, we actually have to break above this 1555 for us to take it to the next level up. And both on gold as well as the silver charts here the macd is still showing it's in positive territory and moving up and on the um, relative strength index it's in the middle of the chart which is still a good sign it's not overbought and not oversold so um, there is a chance we're going to get some more movement up here for a little while here we're stair stepping our way up which is a good sign but um there is still always the possibility that we could have a pullback here in the near future, but I think for right now it's showing positive. But now I want to discuss something else with you folks, and this is going to be something that's probably more for um, someone that's new into uh, looking into buying gold and silver, and actually we're just going to concentrate on silver here today. Um, so some of you more experienced people probably already do this, but I will share a website with you in just a few moments here uh, that I think might be very helpful for you. I can't go into too much detail on this website because they do have um, they do have a disclaimer that you can't be using their uh, information, but I will point out the website real quick and then I will come out of it. This is from geology.com and it's I will put a link down below and I think it's a very um, good website for you folks to be taking a look at uh, there's some great information in here even for you more experienced people but this brings up the topic for me that um, I, I want to discuss with you folks and um, 
I think it's probably one of the most important conversations I've had up till now. And that is, why are you buying silver? I mean, some of you are going to have different reasons for buying your silver. Maybe some of you are just looking to make a quick hit in um, the silver market with an investment to try and build up more fiat currency. Others of you are going to be buying silver because... Uh, you believe that there's going to be an economic collapse and you're looking to protect what wealth you now have. And they're both correct if that's what works for you. But I ask the question here of why you are buying silver, because that's an important question. And what led you to this point that um, makes you think that you should be adding silver um, to your holdings? You've heard me discuss in the past where I think you need to be first, and that is get rid of debt, build up enough cash. And of course, right now, it's, it's uh, showing how this is all important, but building up enough cash to be able to take care of your expenses for three to six months. Um, and again, this is showing to be true right now because many of you might be out of work right now or working on... Uh, a limited income. Uh, some of you might be filing for unemployment, but it is important that you have those features uh, taken care of first, getting rid of that high credit card debt and um, building up enough cash to be able to hold yourself over for a while. But I get back to that question. What led you to this point that makes you think that um, you want to be adding silver to your holdings? Uh, did, it, w w did you hear talk around a water cooler? I mean, that's a, a great place that a lot of people hear about investments. Uh, a friend had said to them, hey, the latest, greatest thing right now, you need to get into buying silver or you need to get into buying a particular stock because it's going to go up. Well, that is not the way to be buying silver or any investment. Um, if you were to be buying a stock, what you would do is you would first look at uh, what industries during this particular time have the most chance to either hold their own or go up. And then from there, you would compare what industry you're looking at as to that industry that um, has that strong possibility. And then you'd look within the industry that you're interested in um, and find the most appropriate stocks in that industry, the ones that have the most uh, benefit of possibly going up now or in the future. Okay, so I used a little analogy of stocks there. But I want to go back to silver now. And what you have to decide here now is you can't just take that talk around the water cooler that somebody heard some big guru say, hey, you need to be buying silver because this is the future. I am a big proponent of having gold and silver in your portfolios, yes. But you got to have the right reasons for it. And you have to have an outlook for what is going to potentially happen down the road here. Uh, we've discussed it many a times. Gold is the metal that you want to be holding when uh, economic uh, situations like this come up because it tends to hold its value a little bit better. But somewhere along the line, silver is going to make its move up. Right now, um, we have a situation where industry around the world basically has shut down. Now, China claims that right now they are starting to get over um, the virus that's going on and some of their economic activity is coming back online again. So that is a good sign. If what they're saying is actually true, you've got to take what China says with a grain of salt because not everything that they tell you is going to be true. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but one thing you want to look at here now is, uh, again, are you looking at a short-term play in silver to get you through this hump here? You're trying to make more currency uh, play on it where you're going to make more money down the road? Um, or do you have this long-term um, thinking with it? 
As far as silver is concerned, one of the things you're going to want to be looking at is what is this metal actually used for? Uh, you know, uh, investors that buy one, five, ten ounce, uh, 50 ounce and 100 ounce uh, bars of silver are really a very small part of the silver industry. The industrial side of it is the major side of this. So what you need to do is you need to take a good look at what industries are using silver. And uh, that's why this link that I'm going to give you for geology.com is going to be very helpful to you because it goes over all the different industries that silver is being used for. And what you need to then do is just like with the stock situation I was talking about, you need to break it down and take a look at each of those particular uses and think about what the future is for those uses. If you go back to the 1970s, and take a look at what the major use of silver was. Back then, it was basically film and, um, and x-ray film. So film for cameras and x-ray film. Well, we all know that that industry basically died. Uh, when digital came around for cameras, uh, the use of silver in film basically died. So you want to take a look at each of these different industries that are using silver right now and think about whether in the future that's still going to be a viable industry. So this is if you're a long-term investor, these are the things you want to think about and what other industries may come along to pick up the slack. So uh, basically what I'm saying here to you folks is, is you don't want to just take water cooler uh, talk telling you that now is the time to buy silver. You want to have some kind of a plan looking into the future as to whether that is still going to be viable in five years, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, or however long that uh, you think you're going to be holding on to your metal. And uh, try and look into that situation there as to whether that's still going to be a viable industry down the road. Right now, the one that's growing the most for use for silver seems to be um, solar panels, uh, Voltec type uh, situations there. So is this an industry that's going to keep on growing and is it going to keep on pushing the price of silver up or is this an industry that is going to actually collapse somewhere down the road and a big chunk of silver usage is going to be pulled out of the market for that and uh, the price of silver is going to react to that or is something else going to come along that's going to pick up that slack and keep silver a very viable uh, material. Now again, for those of you that are just looking to make a short-term play, well I think over the next couple of years you're going to do very fine. Uh, once we get through this situation that we've got going on right now. But for those of you that have a long-term prospect here thinking about what silver is going to do, you have to take these things into consideration as to whether it's going to affect the metal or not. Yes, the uh, silver stacking community is helping to keep this metal propped up right now. It took that big drop recently uh, based on the thought that uh, the economic engine was going to come to a complete stop, which it really has, and that was factored into the prices. Um, but uh, over the next couple of years, we're going to see that spot price move up. We're going to see those premiums move back down. And for a short-term play over the next two years, maybe even three years, depending upon how long it takes us to get out of this uh, situation we're in right now, there's going to be a decent move up. There's going to be many moves down too, so you, you've got to plan for that uh, between now and the time that this market decides to top out. But once it gets towards that top, that's when you have to start deciding, are you going to keep on holding on to this metal and play out what um, is going to happen over the next five or ten years? 
So I hope that this website here, geology.com, is going to help give you some of the industries there that are going to be the future for silver or what are currently um, going on with silver for use and uh, give you some ideas of whether that's going to be sensible to stay in the silver market or whether once it starts coming close to a top it's going to be time to get out and wait for a pullback to get back in again. Well, I know I was a little all over the place here with this today, folks, but um, I, I just wanted to give you some pointers there that um, sometimes you have to dig a little bit deeper than just somebody telling you it's uh, a good investment to make. You really want to have some background information on it so that you can make sensible decisions for the future for yourself because you surely don't want to watch silver make some kind of a big move and start heading up into the upper 20s where there's resistance levels, the mid 30s where there's resistance levels, and up into close to the $50 range where there's a resistance level, and only have it fall back like it has in the past to possibly down where we are right now again. And then you sit here for years saying, why didn't I sell up there? So you, you want to have all this as uh, information that's going to help you make that decision as to whether you're going to want to pull out at those resistance levels or whether you're going to want to play the long-term play on it with the industries that are out there and whether they'll keep that silver price up or whether they're going to eventually slow down those industries and the price of silver is going to collapse again. Okay, folks, I hope this information helped you today, and um, I want to thank you all for being here with me, and uh, for all of you that are new here, I really appreciate that you've joined me. I hope I'm able to present some information for you and with some of my previous videos, as well as this one here, that can help you make some decent decisions for your future going forward with this. And um, I just want to say to all of you, I hope you're being safe out there, uh, keeping your distance from other people right now until we get past this virus situation here. And until next time, folks, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. This is GD. Have a great day. Take care of yourself.